Hey guys and welcome to a new Dungeon Defenders 2 video, I'm your host Mr. Peter and today this is how to beat the Phoenix boss in Ember Mount for Kano. A lot of people make it to the final wave but ultimately struggle to defeat the final boss. Now what if I told you there are many utilities in this game that can really help empower you and your friends to overcome the Phoenix boss. I recommend having heroes who can shoot from afar. Most people use the Huntress or the Gun Witch, but if you have a standard Newt Monk, that's perfectly fine because that's who I use all the time, and I'll demonstrate it later in this video. Next, you want to have these shards for your DPS hero. Sunder and Blow will help you reduce the Phoenix resistance, and Anti Air will help you deal bonus damage to the Phoenix. Next, you want to have these shards with their pairing tower. Empowering Aura increases you and your friend's damage when standing on the Aura and Empowering Blasphemy increases you and your friend's damage when shielded by the Obelisk. And you can also use the World Tree as that provides crit damage and crit chance, but that's up to you if you want to use it. And lastly, this isn't necessary, but I do recommend it. If you're playing with your friends, consider using the shard Radiant Empowerment. This will passively boost everyone's damage when they are close to you. This shard works exceptionally well with the monk. The monk's ability, Heroic Wave, not only buffs himself, but also nearby allies. Having one person as a support monk can greatly increase your team's DPS. Now combine all of these utilities together, you'll be surprised on how much damage you can deal and how quickly you can defeat the boss. With friends, it takes a matter of seconds, but if you're like me and you play solo, in this part of the video, I'll show you how you can defeat the Phoenix by yourself. So the first thing I do is to look for the Hex Row lane. Some Hex Rows can attack the core from their spawn point, depending on what lane they're on really. You should have enough time to find the lane, place down the Reflect Beam, and come back before the timer finishes. If you're not using trees, then you can just wrap the crystal beforehand and just ignore this part. So what I do here is to lure the phoenix to where I am because I have all my buffs and utilities here. Plus, I find this location quite safe. Most of the attacks cannot get you from here. The wooden bridge above us protects you from both the lava balls and the falling rocks. So find the right angle and continuously shoot the phoenix. And that's basically it for the rest of the game. Like I said earlier, it's a lot easier playing with friends, but when you're playing by yourself, you don't have the damage behind you, so it's going to take some time. Don't worry if you die a lot, it happens. As long as you have a setup that can consistently wave clear and secure the bosses, you will be fine. Just remember though, the longer the game is, the more times the Phoenix can attack the core and eventually destroy it, so keep attacking the Phoenix until you beat it. Also, eventually you'll come across some assassins, they're annoying, like really annoying. However, I find the Water Aura and the LSA to be a great anti-assassin setup as they always get electrocuted and conveniently, Empowering Aura works on the Water Aura. How convenient! But if you don't have the Water Aura, you can just use a Water Proton and a Storm Proton and that will do the trick. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this video will help you on your next visit to this map. If you did learn something new or you just enjoyed this type of video, hit that like button, that's going to help out a lot. This is Mr. Peter signing out. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Safe, 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 safe.